Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. And usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. Yes. So this week, we have an episode of The West Wing and Mm -hmm. a special... I was going to say Broadway presentation, but it wasn't exactly Broadway, but we'll get to that. Um, But first, we decided to pick up a new sitcom now that The Good Place is on (gasps) its seasonal break. So, what did you think of One Day at a Time, the new reinvention of it on Netflix? (laughs) Well, I'll admit that I came in with a certain amount of baggage because the original One Day at a Time hit just at the right time for me. I was about the same age as the two daughters. And I just really remember it as a touchstone. I have very strong feelings about it, even though I'm certain that if I watched it today, uh, it would be awful. But <laughs> at the it, it just at the time, you know, you have these certain mm-hmm. things from your youth that you just remember. And it's like, why does it have to be a remake? Why can't it just be another family show? Why do they have to draw on that? So right. I was already kind of, rah, 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 you know, <laughs> old ladyish about it. It's fine. I, uh, you know, I liked the re-recording of the theme song. And mm-hmm. I think that the the mom and the grandma are wonderful. Both the performances are terrific. And I like mm-hmm. the characters and I like their interaction. That's wonderful. Can't stand the kids. So, mm. and Schneider is not Schneider. Give the guy another name. Don't, don't, don't mess with Schneider. You know, I got memories of Schneider. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason that guy needs to be Schneider. Other than that, they're just filling holes from the other show. Um, right. So I have mixed feelings, but I really very much enjoyed uh, the, the performance and the characters of the mom and the grandma. And Rita mm-hmm. Moreno is just having herself a grand time. <laughs> She is. She is. And Justina Machado yes. plays um, the mom. I have is... no previous exposure to her, but she's terrific. Yeah, she's doing a great like job. Like the character, yeah. like the performance, like seeing Stephen Tobolowsky as her boss. Uh-huh. He's always fun. But the other two people at the office, oh my gosh, they're awful. Yeah. Dumb. <laughs> Very awful dumb. and not in an entertaining way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're going about... Let's see, three characters out of how many? <laughs> that I, <enjoy>. right. <laughs> I, I think it's just that, you know, Julie and Barbara were, as I said, about my age. And I have such strong memories of them and their interactions and their particular th- things that they had going on. And it's, these two just don't do it for me. But I'm, of course, at a very different stage in my life. My, my daughter loves the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it may some of it may just be my grouchiness, but well, the the interesting thing about the kids for me is that they exactly match my own kids. Do they? Okay, well, see, 15, that sort of thing is meaningful. Yeah, fifteen year old girl, twelve year old boy, um, is exactly where we are right now. And some of the things that the the boy does, you know, like when <laughs> when the boy is sitting on the couch watching YouTube, uh-huh. check happens. Yeah in my house all the time and the mom comes in with all the grocery bags and says like I need help over here <laughs> and the kid picks up one bag and moves it like eight feet and then he's done <laughs> yeah that that <laughs> struck yeah. a very familiar note for me <laughs> yeah I I liked the second one better than the first one that we watched we watched the first you know the premiere mm-hmm. which is just called this is it yeah um and the second one and i thought the second one worked better uh for me it was the one where they were getting into some issues about sexism and yeah. feminism and the sort of the three generational takes on it from the grandmother mother and daughter and yeah i thought they did a pretty good job of doing it um, in a way that felt real, but also didn't feel, you know, very special episode. Felt a little issuey to me, but the original was very issuey. So Mm -hmm. I can't fuss at that. It was, you know, it was Norman Lear. It was the seventies. It was, uh, you know, that, that I'm sure if I went back and watched it now, I would be cringing, but, um, 
but those were the issues that I was interested in then. <laughs> now mm-hmm. I'm in a different mm-hmm. place in my life. So yeah. it did feel a little bit like, okay, we're going to have our little uh, demonstration on this. But eh, I can't begrudge it that. It's going to do right. that. So, um, But in that one, when, when Rita Moreno came and showed her grandmother, you know, like, you're the first person that's ever seen me without makeup. <laughs> That was very it cute. Was yes, such a nice scene. Between it was. The two of them. It was. She's she's a lot of fun and doing mm-hmm. a great job with it. So, I am enjoying her and all her. You know, she's a pro. <laughs> she's yeah. She does it very well. So, um, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to watch more. Okay, but I still wish it was just not playing on memories of. Right. Something that meant something to me at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is my old person's perspective. Now we get the (laughs) middle person's and the children's perspective. (laughs) Well, and according to Extra Hot Grades, when we get into season two, we don't deal with the co-workers anymore. Okay. Well, that will be too long. (laughs) You're saying we have 11 more episodes of them? Well, who knows how much there. <laughs> well, it would be sad to lose her boss, though. Does he, the, the entire workplace, she goes gets a different job or something? I don't know. They, they got to spe- just have Stephen Tobolowsky wander through every so often. Ned Ryerson, yeah. like. They, and- they did. Um, <laughs> Ned Ryerson, like. They did um, mention, specifically mention the two friends, like the two coworkers. Yeah. So maybe the boss Whoa, is are they still. Bad? Yeah. Maybe the boss still uh, still hangs out. I yeah. I don't know that I even like that character so much. Just I enjoy seeing him turn up and things. The actor, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. He always brings a certain quality to it. But, right. uh, yeah, you know, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's it's not as exciting to me as The Good Place was no. when we started watching it. It was like, wow, this is something different. This is, this yeah. is a reliable formula Mm-hmm. executed pretty well. Yeah. I and, uh, you know, there's value in that. I right. watch a lot of TV that falls into that, <laughs> into that category. Right. So, uh, so we'll, we'll watch, we'll keep going with it. We'll keep going. And, uh, okay. See where it leads us. Right. And so for now, we'll keep going mm-hmm. with, uh, by moving on to the West Wing. Yeah. We watched, Season four, episode 14, The Inauguration, part one. Yeah. And so in this one, it's it's not quite the inauguration. It's, it's the lead up. We <laughs> yes. get up to, up to the last minute before. Right. It's one yeah, we get to the last minute and then we flash back. Then we flash back. So it's mostly the Charlie the coming week. in with the motel Bible. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you that know. was like the... the The best part of this episode for me was the running comic relief of Charlie in the Bible. Yes. Because the rest of it, I was just like, okay. It's like an encore of Charlie with the carving knife. Yes. So, yeah, this, I don't know. It wasn't that exciting, this episode, right? There's there's payoff of some things in the next episode leading up to a really charming scene in my memory. But you need all of this to work up to it. So, Mm -hmm. uh possibly all of this is worth that one scene okay but, <laughs> well, but you don't even yeah that. you don't even know yet quite the instigating factor for that scene that's all coming in the next episode uh-huh. but um you know I'll, I'll, I'll it's it's a pretty cute scene okay. you'll, you'll know it when you see it i think mm-hmm. but um yeah this was okay and and i really like this is a pretty good will bailey episode even though yes. much much of it is is obviously laying groundwork for the second half, but but Will's got some good stuff. You know, he's, yes. he finally speaks up to the president mm-hmm. and to Toby as well, and he has a good idea to go back through all his speeches and look for stuff. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, so that was fun, and it was a nice episode for them to talk to Danica McKellar about. I've had yes. completely forgotten she was in this one. When I saw it on on the podcast list, like okay, but yeah, no, right. she was in it for no yeah, apparent no, she... reason. But I <laughs> yeah, guess she really didn't have much. To I guess do. at I one point understand. early on, 
Will told Toby that he has somebody that he works with. And Toby says, that's fine, but you have to put them up and do oh, whatever. Okay. So I guess that's why she was there mm-hmm. to speak up for him and right. keep us confused about and what her Toby, relationship is. with. Because, let Toby make fun of her name. Yes. Because, I mean, it would seem that since she has a different last name, perhaps they have the same mother and different fathers, but then she referred to his father as her father. So... You know, it's uh, all sorts of yeah. continuity weirdness with that. Yes. <laughs> also, the fact that in the previous episode, um, CJ said it was February. <laughs> yeah. When when her father wanted to go fishing. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh-huh. yet, inaugurations happen in January. So. Yes. Was that meant to be out of <laughs> order? Or, yeah. I mean, we know that that episode is... A weird one, so right, yeah, that probably probably bad on them putting a month in it because otherwise you can use it anywhere. Yeah, but uh, you know, I don't know. Well, that, that year they delayed it. There was a problem. There were internet <laughs> internet connectivity issues, and so <laughs> yes. they had to push the inauguration back to March. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, it's like the I Oscars didn't... used to be in March. The inauguration used to be in March. Right. <laughs> I I didn't much care for the whole. Thing of Donna, you know, asking all the questions about what happened to Jack. Yeah, let me say again, groundwork. Okay. Without because... spoiling. Yes, I didn't either. I just, but I know where it's going, so. Okay. Because I is, feel like that is... It gets is, worse before it gets better, but that there is... That is really not her place, but it I... It is not. And but, I think she knows that. Yes, so yes, what are you doing, girl? You're not going right. to make things better by asking questions. But exactly. at the same time, Josh suggesting that he might have asked for a transfer, <laughs> <laughs> and then she calls him sir and marches off. <laughs> right. Yes, that was. Incredible. Oh, just kiss you two. <laughs> but like CJ and. <laughs> Danny, which I also didn't like because she was only doing it to try to put him off the story. Yeah, Ew, CJ, yeah. don't. Yeah, Ducky. and I think an interesting question asked on the podcast, although they they decided that it was not, but whether if the the genders were flipped, if that would have been ickier. But uh, uh, I think it's icky it's just both icky no ways. matter what. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, that whole thing is a little fraught. Mm-hmm. Um. But, I mean, sure, I want them to be together like everyone does, but yes, not like this. Yep. <laughs> yes, no, be patient, but be very, very, very patient. I know. Be <laughs> be four more seasons patient. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the scenes were a little problematical. Just stuff in my brain about the things going on in that country that I really don't need to be in my brain. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, Equatorial Kundu, and and wasn't that a sh- a country that was mentioned yes, in the previous episode? So everyone was acting like they've never yes. heard of it before. There was there was but mention of it, it, I think, in the comments on the West Wing Weekly. Somebody mentioned that, and yeah, it's a like they de- they've definitely used it before. It was so the nobody- guy seeking AIDS medication early on. The mm-hmm. was for his country is what the commenter had mentioned. So Right. Yeah. So everybody <laughs> acting like they'd never heard of it and they don't know how to pronounce it and we're all like, it's a made up country, but I know how to pronounce it because I've already <laughs> seen it on it's this like, show. If you're gonna pull something out of the bag oh of uh, uh, made up countries, have a researcher make sure you didn't use it before. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you I mean you're not gonna make up the same like you, you're using it because you used it before. That's right. You don't think you right? spontaneously made it up twice? Made I, it up twice. No. I, I may have done that. Think, <laughs> you think something's original, then you realize that you did and it before. Like, oh, <laughs> if you look at the Sorkinisms video, it seems like you wonder if he is aware that he's done these things before. Maybe he's not. Right. Maybe he forgets. Maybe, Maybe he has. He has a, the ability to be constantly impressed by his own cleverness by forgetting mm-hmm. that he's done it before. So, good on him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that dear. was a that was a pretty big error. Yeah, but well, and it was it was funny because during the prayer breakfast, <laughs> I had the same reaction that 
um, Josh Molina did like. We're all wearing skull caps. Like, can't we all just get along? That's <laughs> right. Like, this one has a yarmulke. This one has whatever. Yeah, I That's I noticed funny. the exact same thing. Like, we're all we're all covering our heads with small small embroidered objects. Can we just find common ground? One please? would think, at least on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's funny, but uh, what else? So next next. Week it's part two mm-hmm. of this one, yes. but for some reason it's not called part two. That it's is called odd. inauguration over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there is there there is what I hope you will find to be worthwhile payoff, both to Donna asking too many questions and Charlie being ticked off about Jean Paul or Jean Pierre or whatever he wants to call him. <laughs> <laughs> and where he's sitting for the inaugural. Yes, yes. Okay. There is one scene that sort of adorably pays both those things off, I think. In my memory, we will see if it, if it still hits me that way. But okay. uh, possibly not worth, you know, an hour and or an episode and a half of annoyance, but still. <laughs> of waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Donna really needs to. Although, you know, that the whole thing about the uniform and Josh going on about the 13 yeah. months on the pants right and i don't want to know how you know about that and then later talking about the degree of bladder control <laughs> right. that was that was a small compensation yes um josh really is annoyed by this guy mm-hmm. but it is too bad really what happened there that they did ask him for this thing and then he got in trouble leo knows that he said too much Right. And, uh, that was a nice, that, that Leo Hutchinson scene was. Yes. Whoa. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was intense, but it yes. was really well done, of and, course. And similarly, on a comic note, the scene between Will and the guy from the State Department, that was sort of the, <laughs> the comic relief version of that same scene where this president can't do that. Uh-huh. And. And Will's, you know, crack, cracks back about it rather than yes. getting angry. So mm-hmm. that was, that was a good scene. He was, he was yeah. very good in that. And uh, he's getting his, uh, he's getting his powers back here. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon it's going to be raining someplace because Will Bailey is on it. <laughs> Will Bailey's on it. <laughs> he uh, has powers, y'all. Yeah. Although, yeah, so it's, it yeah. was was a, a fine episode i didn't mind watching it and uh i look forward to this particular scene that is in my memory okay and uh well, we, we we will discuss next that. week whether you yes. recognize it when you see it i think okay <laughs> so that's next week um so for the challenge round for this yeah. week um it was kind of something a little different. So yeah. why don't you, I had a chance to brush up on my Spanish also watching it. <laughs> so why don't you explain a little See, bit it's, about it's, what it we did? It fits in with the, uh, the one day at a time, you know, yeah, it's yeah. got that extra little flair. Um, um, well, I have been thinking for a while, there was a, a production uh, in 2011 of the Stephen Sondheim musical company that was done. It was originally supposed to be a concert performance with the New York Philharmonic, as apparently is done from time to time. Basically, you mm-hmm. get sort of recognizable people who come, and they all they have to do is learn the score, and they sing, and that's it. This this production of Company sort of grew to be at least a somewhat staged performance of the entire musical with both the book and the music. And uh, Neil Patrick Harris played the central character, and many recognizable faces playing the supporting characters, including Stephen Colbert singing mm-hmm. a musical and uh, Martha Plimpton, uh, John Cryer, uh, Patty Lupone played the part that Elaine Stritch played in the original Broadway cast, thus getting to sing ladies who lunch, which, yes. is, a, <laughs> which is a big diva number. And, uh-huh. uh, so, and it was, uh, I, I read a lot about it at the time and was very interested in it. And then they, it, it had a, a couple of performances, a small number of performances, and then they put out a DVD of it, and 
I don't remember if they ever had televised it or not, but I think they might have. There might have been recordings of it online because I know I saw it before I had the DVD of it, and uh, I've always kind of enjoyed it. And I thought, you know, one day when I'm looking for something to challenge, I'll challenge Catherine to watch that. Well, when the time came, I figured, you know, this is uh, coming out the day before Valentine's Day, and it's a, a musical that has a lot to say about relationships, particularly marriage, but mm-hmm. also connecting to other people. Uh, another yeah, person friendship specifically well. friendship mm-hmm. and then just you know whether being an independent entity is okay or whether you need to make a commitment to another person so it seemed appropriate for this day and I went to f- see if it's you know available f- to stream anywhere and it's not is it in libraries no is it still for sale for like $75 mm-hmm. and finally I found it on YouTube Great Expectations en Espanol has it on YouTube <laughs> with Spanish Spanish subtitles but still sung in English and so perfectly watchable and enjoyable in one big block there. So mm-hmm. that was my challenge to you. Uh, and I watched it again both on my laptop on the YouTube version and then I watched my DVD last night, which uh, the sound is much richer on DVD on your TV, which is for better and for worse. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I just really enjoyed it again, and I just find it really thought-provoking and interesting. And I thought what they did in this production, um, the, the, the liner, and I shared with you the liner notes from the DVD, which go into the fact that all these people signed on to stand on stage and sing, and then they kept adding this stuff. They, they were never together until, I guess, the opening day. So they yeah. were all practicing it and learning the the dance moves and learning the musical parts all by themselves. They would get recorded tracks to sing to. They would have stand-ins to practice with because some people were in L.A. and some people were in New York and some people were on tour someplace. And so it was really put together in a, a sort of a slapdash way. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. given that especially, I think that the performance was really very good and very entertaining and uh uh, there's other versions of this bouncing around. The 2006, I believe, version with Ralph Esparza is also on YouTube in pieces. It's a modular version of the musical, <laughs> okay. but you can, if you line them up just right, you can watch it all the way through with a little. And that is very good, also. And his, you know, performance of the of the Bobby's numbers is very expressive and interesting. They they um, that for that one they did all the the cast members played instruments. So that's oh, sort of wow. a different thing. And at the end, when he sings Being Alive, is the first time he really sits down and plays an instrument. He plays the piano. So mm-hmm. I kind of have that in my head, too. So, it's, uh, so uh, you had never seen this music before in any production, I don't think. So no. what did you think of this particular production with Neil Patrick Harris that you watched and of the musical in general? Well, I really enjoyed watching it. Um, it, it as you said, it was this sort of hybrid of... yeah. Um, full-on production, but it wasn't, but they st- still had a bit of costumes and a bit of set and mm-hmm. um, choreography, so it, it was very entertaining to see them all putting it together, especially when you know, you know, the circumstances yeah. <laughs> that, that they were working under, um, yeah. and to see all these, all these familiar people right. doing very unexpected things, you know, yeah. John Cryer, like Christina Hendricks. <laughs> yes, um, yes, I forgot to mention her. She was terrific. I really like her, April. Yeah. And she plays the flighty flight attendant. <laughs> That's <April>. right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, I, I enjoyed it. I, I usually like Sondheim, although mm-hmm. I, I really haven't seen a whole lot of, I mean, I've seen Into the Woods a bunch of times. Um, I've seen that on stage, and I've seen the movie that uh-huh. that had Meryl Streep that came out a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, I I enjoy his his style, Stephen. Yeah, Sondheim. I think so. I've listened to more cast albums than I've actually seen productions. Right, because I'm familiar with a lot of the music, but not what goes in between. Mm-hmm. But yeah, maybe we should, we should do into the woods for a challenge. Right? That's true. No, we could do yeah. that. Yeah. I'll find it someplace. Um, well, the and, movie. Yeah. That, oh, that's true. The, I wonder if the Broadway version must be on YouTube someplace. I would like to see some of those actors in it, mm-hmm. but, yeah. uh, um, 
I thought it was interesting. I like the way they did it in this, where they had the little little couches that they pushed around. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it was like the couch choreography. You know, mm-hmm. so they didn't have to work on people walking around. They had a lot of right. they had these these people in black pushing furniture all through it. Um, but and, then, and I honestly I didn't miss having any more mm-hmm. set. Right. You know, it didn't, it didn't seem like it needed it. You know, you yeah. just, you just needed the music and you almost didn't even need as much dancing as they did, except yeah. for maybe in the, um, side by side. Right. That, that was... needs it. Yeah. You know, it's so vignette I'm not sure how much, uh, more staging it usually has. Right. The, the 2006 Broadway version, very sparse. I mean, they were all carrying around instruments and stuff, but there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't really very much more staging of it there than in this. So Mm -hmm. it may just be that that's the way it's, uh, either that's the way it's always done or that is a viable way to do it. So, because you're, you know, going popping in from one place to another and, and different configurations of characters. And then they walk in to (laughs) other people walk in and to transfer into a different scene. So, yeah, but it's really not dependent on, on where they are. No. You, know, you don't need to see their apartment or their bar no. that they're in or whatever. You just no. need their conversation. That's right. Yeah. Very interesting. And it's, uh, I was remembering watching this, that there was a whole thing at the time talking about whoever sits in the front row uh, of this particular production. It's like sitting in the front row at the Shamu show at SeaWorld. Right. You're, you're going to get Patty going to spill a drink throwing, on you. <laughs> throwing a drink in your face and you will, you will welcome it. <laughs> you will. You will brag about it later. You yes. will never wash that shirt. <laughs> Yeah, so that was fun. I really enjoyed watching it again. And I've been like reading Wikipedia about it and listening to the various cast albums. The The original Broadway cast had uh, Barbara Berry in the part that Martha Plimpton played in this one, which you can totally see. And Charles mm-hmm. Kimbrough as the Colbert part uh, from Murphy Brown. Yep. I remember. Yeah. So I can absolutely see the two of them doing all that uh, karate <laughs> business. And that wonderful passive aggression between the two of them. Yes. That scene. <laughs> oh, very funny. And I did think that it was, um, you know, we talked, you talked a little bit about adjacency to Valentine's Day. And, and I yes. thought, you know, it, it definitely made that point of like, you know, marriage is hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. I think was, was definitely what they were all. Yeah. Trying to, trying to say in their <laughs> Yeah. In their challenging ways. They, they didn't they didn't have the best uh, you know. They didn't have the most convincing arguments, but <laughs> Yeah, I mean all the all the vignettes of the marriages were kind of awful. But um you know, I think that some of the lyrics and had interesting things to say. I mean, sorry grateful certainly has interesting things to say that it's, you know, there's good and bad all the time, and yeah. you're different, but you're still the same person. And mm-hmm. you know, you love having this person here, and then you sort of hate having this person here. And uh, the certainly the closing number, being alive, talking about sort of the bad things, and then realizing that those are sort of the things you want. You know, right? <laughs> it's like it's connection with another person mm-hmm. at that level of intimacy is always complicated. And, yeah. you know, I had my little tantrum this week of <laughs> <laughs> my husband doesn't appreciate anything I like and he won't talk about things that are important. And then at this, you know, later that day, I'm grateful for his support and right. just having him. I mean, it's, you, you're, you're always individuals. You're never going to lose that. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. you know, to quote Hamilton, I know who I married. I use that line quite a lot. <laughs> um not per- perhaps in the same context that she did, but still, yes. you know, so it's, it's, I really, uh, really like it and I find it thought provoking and, mm-hmm. um, interestingly done. Mm-hmm. And, yes. uh, the performances in this were fun, especially since so many of them are recognizable people. Mm-hmm. So, so thank you. Anybody who's interested in, in listening to this, uh, taking a nice little val- uh, melancholy Valentine's Day watching of Company, there is at least two productions of it um, on uh-huh. YouTube that you can wallow in, plus uh, cast albums available of the original Broadway cast 
and the 2006 Broadway cast are both on Apple Music. So, uh, yeah. you know, take a listen. We'll have the links. Uh, we'll, we'll put the links up again for it in the show notes for this episode. Now we're going to issue another challenge for this. <laughs> yes. What is, what <laughs> so is the next challenge, this one also Catherine? falls into the category of, I haven't seen it, but we both think, or I think we should try it. <laughs> That's what it is. I think we should try it. I don't know yeah. about you. <laughs> try it. Right. It's so possible you that might like it. is the fact that David Letterman has, as you say, <laughs> come down from the mountain with his giant grizzly beard. And he, maybe he's inviting everybody up oh, to the mountain. We haven't true. watched it yet. Perhaps this takes mm-hmm. place in a cabin someplace. So he has a show on Netflix and it seems like it's just coming out one episode a month something like that and it's kind of a talk show i don't know exactly what the what it's going to be like so we're going to just try it out and see we are we we did not watch the first one which in which the main guest was barack obama the second one which just came out the main guest is george clooney so we are going to check that out and see what it's all about so yes, I have a long history with David Letterman, similar to One Day yeah, at a Time. I have a long right. history with David Letterman. I watched him even in his very bizarre morning show, which must have been in the the late seventies, early eighties, because it was when I was in college. Maybe maybe it was like eighty one, um, and I just remember thinking, "Why is this on now? It's delightful, but is anybody watching it but me?" And then he got. You know, he's he went to late night, which was his more right. comfortable home. So I guess I'm with him for whatever iteration he's going right. through. But wow, that's quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> so we, it's called My Next Guest Needs No Introduction on okay. Netflix. And we'll watch the Clooney episode of that the all second right one. all right and for next week we'll watch the west wing as we mentioned it's called inauguration over here and continue yes. with one over here or over there i think it's called over here it oh no it? over there you're right you're right <laughs> over there <laughs> but it takes place over here right. so that's a okay. yes. over here they're thinking about over there <laughs> so it's kind of a little of both so um and one day at a time, the next two episodes are called No Mass and A Snowman's Tale. Um, and then we wanted Alrighty. to mention that coming up for the following challenge is yes. going to be A is for Alibi by Sue Grafton. So in case you want a little extra time to read that, you can do that. So that's coming yes. up. I should start on that, shouldn't I? I have it from the library. So I'm ready. <laughs> I got to download it to my phone. So that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, everyone. 